everyone, I am Mindy Grace and this is my channel, Girl of a Different Era. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. And wait, before you click off this video thinking, this looks boring, it's a girl in a vintage hat, this is so boring. Wait, we have a super duper fun project, a dress I made for my graduation party. Graduation slash going away, whatever you want to call it. It's this lovely little curtain dress. And um, yeah, this was super fun to make and inspired by Sound of Music because who hasn't watched it and fallen in love with those curtain dresses and wanted a Maria to make some for you too, right? Um, it's just so fun, you know? And then the captain's response to the dresses, you know what I mean. So I decided I wanted to go with uh, more of a simple look because to be perfectly honest, I'm not rich. <gasps> Tragedy! And I love thrift flips. And I feel like it's something that a lot of people are drawn to. It's like thrift flips, recycle, you know. And yeah, so I wanted something that I could wear that wasn't going to be too dressy and make other people feel uncomfortable. Something I can play a game of tag in. And little, definitely a few things. You know, one thing I was thinking like Austrian dirndl type thing. And then like a dress with a vest. And then I came across these curtains and... They kind of took over what I was making. Here is just a sneak peek of it, and here are some awesome photos. And this dress involved, I didn't really get a pattern. you hear me talking about this later on, but just want to say it was like a conglomeration of patterns and self-drafting and everything like that. But if you were interested in knowing how I made it and how maybe you can make one or just want some inspiration, please stick around because we have a super fun video to the sewing room. And do something besides drink tea at a really, really cute pig mug. I love them. They're like cuter than... Percy Blakeney from Scarlet and Bedell. Okay, fine. I take it back. This is the pattern that I sort of based my bodice off of. And as always, the first step is to make a mock-up. So here I give you guys just a little look at the mock-up that I made. And I will be talking more about this later. After I figured out how exactly I wanted the bodice to fit. I then unpicked the mock-up and used that as my pattern. And now it came just to pinning the darts. And I have done a lot of darts recently, so this wasn't too bad. It's just a matter of time and work, as with everything. And I took them right to the sewing machine, and I've said this before, but instead of backstitching at the point of the dart, just sew to the end and then tie it off into a double knot later. And it was time to pin the right sides of the bodice together so I could get these ready to sew. This is always a really enjoyable part because it's when your creation starts actually taking more of a 3D shape and you can sort of see, oh, this is how it's going to look when it's done. While making the bodice, I ran into a problem. I was making the mock-up and it wasn't fitting because I needed the bust to be two inches smaller and I kept trying to move the darts around and they weren't working. Why? Finally, something clicked. You know, I feel like God sometimes just gives us a message like, okay, this is what you're doing, this is what you need to change. And he just sometimes helps us connect things and helps us think through things. Now, when I say with this, I just want to give you an example. First, I'm going to explain. The curvier a person, the thicker a dart is going to have to be. So, here we've got an example of a very curvy person of 28 inch waist, 38 inch bust. Now we have a 28 inch waist and a 34 inch bust. 
Now, this lady is going to have to have a very wide dart. Why? Because she's going to have to start out with wider fabric. The widest part of your bodice, since it's not cut on the bias, is for the bust, excluding the shoulders, tucking here down. Okay, she's going to have to start out with a 38 inch you know, panel thing. And she's going to have to really take in 10 inches through various starts. This lady is going to start off with a 34 inch. That's going to be her widest part. She's not going to take, she's going to take in darts, but the actual dart width is going to be smaller because she has less to take in because she doesn't have a really dramatic curve. So I hope this explains it just a little bit more to you. Again, I'm just going to say it again. The widest part of your fabric, if you've got a 34 inch bust, this is how only how wide your fabric needs to be, okay? Yeah, and then you just take that in for your 28 inch waist. If you've got a bigger bust, more wide fabric at the top, and it's going to have to come in more if you still have a very thin waist. I hope this explains. If not, I'm sorry, but let's get right back to the sewing room because I was really happy that a light bulb had clicked. And now it is time to sew that bodice together with a 5 8 seam. Throughout this process, my thread kept breaking so much. <laughs> I had to cut out a lot of that type of footage. And now it comes to making the facing. Although I attempted to make this on my own, I decided just to go with the one with the pattern of the bodice I was making. So the key is just to get those pinned together first and then roll up that edge so it won't fray on the edge. I do what I call a double hem, which is pretty much just you make the smallest little hem as you can twice. So you're just rolling it under and sewing it. It's definitely a fiddly process, but thanks to this being on the bias, it's not too bad. And now I'm attaching the facing to the bodice itself and just pinning that in place. And now I took it to the machine and I'm just sewing that 5 8 inch seam along the edge of that. with the right sides together. So when I flip it down, it's gonna really look great. Now I'm doing something that's called understitching, which is just stitching that extra seam allowance to the facing itself to hold the facing down so it won't be flopping up where it can be visible from the outside. And I came into a bit of a problem when I discovered that I made my bodice too short because I was trying to accommodate for my short torso but it was too short anyways so I ended up deciding to cut out a band and sort of add that detail to the dress so just sew it onto the bottom of the bodice between the bodice and the skirt so it took a little figuring out what I was going to do but I figured out the length I think I wanted it two inches finished and I cut out some interfacing because I definitely wanted it to be stiff and not wrinkling up on me. Here, after I've fused interfacing to the band, I am just pinning that right to the bottom of the bodice. And so I decided to use the back of the fabric to be the right side of the band. It's got a little confusing. And I just took that to the machine and sewed it right down. And since I self-drafted this, I believe I used a half an inch seam. Because I'm like, I don't get 5 eighths inch. I don't understand why they do that. It came for the skirt. But first I did level out my remaining fabric. So I laid it so it all was even. And then I just leveled out both sides with a ruler. So I wasn't going to be having a really jagged skirt in the end.
and I am sewing that seam together using the already hemmed portion of the curtain on the edge just leaving that right on the seam so I don't have to worry about finishing that skirt seam and now it comes to the two rows of gathering stitches that I'm making on the top of the skirt I gave it plenty of room from the top because it's such a frayable fabric and as always it's just time to gather those and figure out exactly how wide you want it here is my first try on after putting the skirt on I have the zipper pinned in and I was quite excited with how it was looking and yeah I am folding 5 eighths of an inch back on each side where the zipper is going to be installed and then I'm just going to pin the zipper over top of that and sew it in place. I did make a mistake with the zipper and it ended up being not the same length on the top of the dress so I think one should pin a zipper in both sides at the same time or something like that. that I ran into a problem. The back of my dress was bubbling up at the back. Very unbecoming, very not nice. What was I going to do? I was like, I could kind of try to unpick it and take in some of this with the seams. But I'm like, I added the facing already. I don't wanna, and it could change everything. And maybe I was lazy. Maybe I just didn't wanna get into that. So I did something different. You can see, I'm sure this isn't beautiful and this is not um, normal or a good idea, but I'm just letting you know what I did. I took some of this from the back and I folded it in a crease, okay? And down like this. help I still do have a little bit of a bubble on the back of my dress but you know I'm just ironing it and I'm not freaking out about it so if worse comes to worse flipping this over I mean the butt the butt the facing is all wrinkled up inside but it, it still sits fine no one's gonna know and it kind of has a cool detail it almost looks intentional right so that's what I did at this point then I borrowed the sleeve pattern from another one of my simplicity patterns, which is meant to have a drawstring on the bottom, but I didn't do that. I pinned two layers together since the fabric was so um, slippery, I wanted it to have more structure. So I just worked with two layers and I just took those to the sewing machines and sewed closest to the edge as I could. Here I am just putting in the gathering stitches for both edges since they have to be gathered to fit the shoulder and gathered to fit the sleeve band. And the lovely process that every costumer hates is installing the sleeves. Why? I don't understand. It's just like the thing no one likes doing. It's so fiddly, but here you get a little bit of footage of me fiddling around with it. <laughs> And I took that to the machine to sew it down and hope my thread didn't break halfway through. Like it did. <laughs> and I had decided I had to unpick some of the stitching right where the seam is open because it was making it pull really weirdly. So I just hand sewed that down leaving sort of the seam in the same shape so it wouldn't pull from the outside. And now I'm just measuring about what my arms width is and I'm making a band for the bodice. Again, this is going to be two layers thick, which means it's going to be four layers because it's going to be folded in half. But I wanted it to have some structure, but not so much that I needed interfacing. 
and more fiddly footage of me putting the band onto the bodice. And this is a thing where you know you attach it and then you pull up the gathers. I brought it to the sewing machine to stitch them right down. And then just on the back side, I did a hem stitch or a whip stitch or an invisible whip stitch, whatever, to just keep that back side down and not add a bunch of stitching visible from the outside. I decided to bind all my open seams with interfacing. It's really lazy, but you just take it on and fuse it on both sides and it really works. But I'm sure it's not like officially approved. To finish on the edge of where I attached the band, I just had another band section and stitched that to the inside so it covered both of the edges and added more thickness to the band itself. Of course, I did run short at one point and I had to use interfacing to protect the last edges. Now here's just a few brief little things of me making a bow for the back because um, there's lots of bows involved in every dress, I think, especially in the curtain dresses. So I just made a classic bow where it actually looks really nice, but it's not tied, it's sewed. And there it is finished. I even added tails to make it look more realistic. As you can see. I then decided to sew snaps onto the back so I would have snaps on the belt bow and snaps on the back of my dress so the bow would be removable. So here I'm just doing some simple hand stitching to that snap. And I am sewing a snap, like I said, on to the dress in two different places. Again, so happy this has got a zipper because it's open and it's so much easier to sew this in than if it didn't have a back opening. And here is sort of how it all comes together. A word about making a detachable bow. I kind of got this idea as an inspiration. It's really cool. The bow snaps on and off, as you've seen. And this, I feel like, could be a good idea because if I want to launder it and I don't want to get my bow in the laundry or if I want to wear it to weed the garden and I want to put on an apron, I don't have to worry about the bow being in the way. So I just wanted, maybe it's an idea, maybe it's really popular and I just didn't know, but detachable bows with snaps. It, it... Now came time to finish the skirt. I measured the length I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit below my knees and then I added two and a half inches onto the finished length I wanted and cut off the excess fabric. The next thing I did was curl up about half an inch all along the bottom of my skirt. I used pins to keep the stubborn polyester in place and lots of hot iron steam. The next step was curling up two inches again so that half an inch that I first curled up is then underneath the two inches. This gives a nice thick something for the dress to actually hang with. I then had the long process of whip stitching or an invisible whip stitching the entire hem. Thank you for sticking around to the end. You made it through! And as a reward to you, and you now get to see lots of photos of me out in the cold, freezing. Don't mind the red hands and red nose and look of coldness on my face. <laughs>
Okay, that I guess wraps it up. Like I said, thank you for staying around. And I hope, my biggest hope really with these videos is that I might inspire you to go do something. If I have, it will literally make my week, possibly my entire month, if you let me know if this has inspired you to go do something, okay? That's really what, what I want to do. So, um, your presence means a bunch. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, and please subscribe because there's nothing like logging into my YouTube and seeing another subscriber. It's a slow process, but I know, I know you're very loyal, okay? I know all of you are, so that means a lot to me to know that I've got some really loyal people watching this. That being said, you've been watching Girl of a Different Era, where we are making our story his story, one creation at a time. Bye! Love you all.